What's up, guys? I hope you're well. Chad Hill here. Today, we're checking out American Things Europeans Can't Understand. Let's see if this may be a little interesting. Let's get into it. While the culture of the United States is exported all over the world in films and on TV, and also abides by some laws and practices that many consider unusual, Europeans in particular seem to have a hard time wrapping their heads around some of them. From child beauty pageants to gun laws, let's take a look at some American things that Europeans can't understand. Yeah. Sick of commercials. If you're a European enjoying a cozy night in on the couch in America, some of the stuff on TV may shock and surprise you. And no, I'm not talking about keeping up with the Kardashians. I'm talking about commercials, which arrive so frequently it makes watching TV feel almost unbearable to anyone unaccustomed to it. Seals leaks instantly. Use it on But wait, there's more. Especially pharmaceutical commercials, which usually show grumpy men and women turned into smiling happy people by that product being sold. These are usually followed by an almost comically long list of potential side effects spoken at double speed. Yeah, the side of <laughs> these commercials themselves, pardon me, it could easily be eight seconds and they draw them out to 30 seconds with all the side effects. Like, oh, you know, this could cause death, but it could help you better your life over here. Is that worth death? Like Ambient Ad. As well as abnormal behaviors such as being more outgoing or aggressive than normal, confusion, agitation, and hallucinations may occur. Don't take it with alcohol as it may increase these behaviors. Allergic reactions such as shortness of breath, swelling of your tongue or throat may occur and in rare cases may be fatal. Side effects may include next day drowsiness, dizziness, and headache. In patients with depression, worsening of depression including risk of suicide may occur. These types of direct-to-consumer commercials peddle prescription drugs, which is an advertising standard that was rejected by the European Commission back in 2002. Good. The commission Smart. stated that pharmaceutical companies were unable to provide impartial information on their medicines. If that's the case, why is it practiced in America? To put it simply, there's simply never been a federal law passed to outlaw the practice. This is in no small part thanks to the fact that direct-to-consumer drugs and their accompanying ads are a huge business. I think that's kind of sad. Whether it's right or wrong, the rules tend to follow Very the sad money. to me. Europeans might actually need a pill for the headache all those ads give them. Yeah, take some Tylenol. Telepathic powers and a violent hatred of cheese. Hatred no of cheese. No place like home. Let's say you're a European who's just moved over to America. Mm -hmm. You found a house in a nice residential neighborhood and you're going through your bills. Rent, water, gas, electric, all seems in order. Mm -hmm. But wait a second. What's a homeowner's association? Oh, for? A native. That oh, they're the devil. I have an HOA, homeowner's association, and they are awful. They just, oh, they tell you, you can't do this with your house. You can't do that. And they're <clears throat> supposed to maintain um, the community areas and the neighborhoods, and they don't, and it looks like trash. I hate them. That's a pretty obvious question. But for Europeans, it's an unwelcome surprise. These fees contribute to the local homeowners association, which is somewhat like a neighborhood watch, but managing funds to be reinvested into the community. It goes towards things like residential maintenance and common spaces, which keeps residents happy and property values up. With around 24% of all Americans living under a homeowners association, they pay 200 to 300 dollars on average per month in fees to these entities. Now, I while some Europeans now. might struggle with this concept, it was a form of governance that was actually invented by France back in 1804. The condominium. Oh, the French created. Are you not surprised? Of course the French created this, why wouldn't they? All was exported to the US where it became incredibly popular. So for any European that wants to complain about homeowner regulations and fees, feel free to blame the French. Mm. Vacant vacation days. The USA has one of the largest economies in the world. Mm -hmm. A tremendous economy, in the president's words. But Europeans looking to get into the American world of work are often shocked when it comes to vacation time. U.S. workers are not entitled to mandatory paid vacation at all. Mm -hmm. 
Usually, the issue of paid leave is left at the discretion of employers. And yes, that does include national holidays. Mm -hmm. According to research from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 2017, only 77% of American workers had access to paid vacation. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that might leave Europeans slack, John, is because mandatory paid vacation time in Europe starts at four weeks. Wow. In fact, America is one of the only Western countries where law doesn't enforce companies to give its employees mandatory paid vacation. <clears throat> it's common, uh, like two week vacation a year, but then we also give sick days and a few personal days, but yeah, it's two week vacation time. But my thing is, does the four weeks include bank holidays? Because I know in uh, the UK, there are a lot of bank holidays. It seems like you guys have one, at least a bank holiday a month. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's like 12 days right there. Vacation time. Don't believe me? Take a look at this map breaking down mandatory paid vacation time by country. Only the gray countries are known not to give paid time off. Mm. It's a working culture that undoubtedly favors employers over employees. Americans might want to think about learning Chinese instead, as employers in China must legally offer five days of holiday. Although that is after one continuous year of work. Win some, lose some, I guess. Yeah. Florida man. Ah! If the American states could be looked at as a dysfunctional family, then Florida would be the weird uncle who once ran away with the circus and wrestled a tiger. The Sunshine State is the third most populous state in the USA and receives over 100 million visitors year on year. With so many people living between Miami Beach, Disneyland, and Pensacola, a little crazy is bound to be found on the fringes of society. But what Europeans aren't prepared for are the crazy antics of Floridians that make daily headlines. From Florida Man believed that he was half man, half dog in March 2019 to Florida man robs bank, strips naked, then runs down the street throwing stolen money everywhere. In July 2017, you can search the internet for almost any day of the year and find a headline announcing Florida man there has are, committed yeah, an there utterly baffling crime. There doesn't seem to be an equivalent for any European countries, <laughs> although the UK comes close with some of its questionable journalism topics like <laughs> Britain's fattest woman ate fridge and died. Let me know the funniest local headlines you've ever seen at stories at bmaze.com. <laughs> VAT trouble. Mm -hmm. In Europe, like most of the world, tax is built into the price of items in store and online. So what you see on the tag is what you pay. But Europeans visiting... See, that makes it so much easier here. Um, it's probably going to get into it, but it's like... It goes per county, per, per even per, per city, even per like neighborhood, the taxes the percent of taxes change. You don't know what your taxes, you don't know how much taxes you're going to pay until you get to the register. That sucks. Thing an American store might be left doing a double take at their bill when they reach the register. There is no national sales tax or value added tax in America. Instead, American taxes differ by jurisdiction, of which there are around 7,000. Differences See? in these local rates, state taxes, or combined state and local taxes means that final prices for the same item can differ from one street to the next. See? For first-time shoppers in the U.S., this unpleasant surprise is a rite of passage that no one asks for. No. Tipping point. Mm. A meal at a restaurant can be a real treat, but Europeans visiting America sometimes stress about the tip. Although tipping anywhere up to 20% seems normal to most Americans, mm -hmm. there's no such obligation in Europe. Indeed, it's mostly seen as a bonus reward for good service. And in some European countries, it's even considered rude and excessive to leave a tip. Wow. The American federal government, however, states that tips can be used to satisfy the difference between the employee's hourly wage and the standard minimum wage. Mm -hmm. This means food servers, valets, and in-house staff in certain states can be working for a federal wage of just $2.13 per hour, yep. which is about one euro 96 cents, so if you're a European visitor to the States, get ready to factor in your tip to the overall price of your meal. You yep, might yep. well be contributing to a struggling waiter's rent. Child beauty pageants. Oh God! I've been unfortunate enough Ew. to have watched an episode of Toddlers and Tiaras on TLC. I think you might side with the Europeans on the next matter. Child beauty pageants are common across America Horrible. and usually consist of dolled up little girls being thrust onto a stage to entertain a crowd of screaming moms. It's truly bizarre. 
But what's equally strange is how the craze got started. Child pageants originated from American Better Baby contests in the early 20th century. Babies would be scored on characteristics like weight, quality of skin, and face shape, supposedly in the name of helping to educate mothers on best practices for healthy babies. But of course, it wasn't just for education purposes. There were also cash rewards and trophies for top-ranking toddlers. This has slowly devolved into the bedazzled tradition of pushing a child on stage in full makeup and styled hair to do a dance routine for prize money. Although some European countries host similar but smaller events, others like France have gone as far as to ban all such pageants, claiming they're an unhealthy way to treat young girls. If you ask me, their general creepiness alone should be enough to slam the brakes on child beauty yeah. pageants. Oh, yeah. Honey Boo Boo, no thanks. Nope, nope. Size is everything. Oh, geez, here we go. According to an old saying, Every American is fat. That is not true. <laughs> but I know that's the, the stereotype, stereotype of Americans. Like, Americans are all fat, slobs. Look at me. I'm skinny. Everything's bigger in Texas. But if you're a European, you'll probably think that about all of America. Right down to its people. It's no secret that America has a little bit of a weight problem. Two-thirds of American adults classify as overweight, and it's estimated that almost 40% of adults in the U.S. age 20 and over are obese. Contrasted to Europe, where a survey carried out in 2014 labeled just 15% of adults obese. That's a king-size difference, with yeah. a side of fries. The American tendency to overeat might have something to do with portion sizes in the States. A right. study comparing portions in Paris and Philadelphia revealed food outlet portions were 25% larger in Philly. And a review of 17 different single-serve foods like yogurt and candy bars found that 14 of them were bigger in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. While a one-state-to-one-country comparison doesn't necessarily represent the whole, Europeans on social media often comment on how much bigger everything seems stateside. Yeah. Have you noticed this difference in portion sizes? Mm -hmm. Let me know in the comments below. Yeah. Bonus points for food puns. Oh, sugar. Oh, here Living we go. in America can really give you a taste for the sweet life, but your teeth won't thank you for it. Why? Well, some American foods and drinks have been found to contain huge amounts of sugar compared to their European equivalents. Mm -hmm. Some common bread brands contain up to six grams of sugar per Jesus. serving. Six times the amount found in European counterparts. It's ridiculous. But it doesn't end there. Taking a look at Pizza Hut sugar content reveals most of their stateside pizzas have close to double the amount of sugar per slice as European Holy versions. Crap. And in Starbucks, a UK venti white chocolate mocha will contain 62.4 grams of sugar. But in America, that shoots up to 72 grams. I've heard of sweetening the deal, but any Europeans making the trip across the Atlantic might leave suffering from the toothache. Gaps in the market. European ah. standards of building a public restroom involve plenty of privacy, mainly yeah. in the form of cubicles with doors that are more door than gap. Seems obvious, but it's a standard that Americans just can't seem to adopt. Yeah, that's with pretty bad here. With ridiculously large Look gaps at, at the top, bottom, and sides, it makes for a truly uncomfortable first visit to an American mm -hmm. toilet for unwitting mm -hmm. visitors. On their first time, Europeans are left feeling especially susceptible to unwelcome visitors and peeping Peek toms. Some people even resort to taping up the gap to prevent prying eyes looking in. But as strange as the design seems, there are some theories as to why Americans build their stalls this way. For a start, high floor gaps allow for easier cleaning, and they do make it simpler to pass toilet paper from one cubicle to another. Yeah. On top of that, the vertical gaps act as a deterrent for anyone thinking of doing anything naughty behind closed doors. But there's always the chance you might accidentally get a real eyeful. Oh Maybe boy. just close your eyes before entering any American restrooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Triggered. It strikes many Europeans as a bit odd that in America you can pick up your groceries from one aisle of a store and a gun from another. It's pretty much Walmart. I think Walmart may be the last place here that you can do that uh, commonly. You can't, you, can't, you can't walk into a supermarket and be like, oh, I need bread and bullets. You know, you can't do that. But you can go to Walmart and be like, I need bread and, you know what? I kind of want a semi-automatic shotgun. Here you go. Indeed, you can buy guns over the counter in places like Walmart, and ammo can be found in pharmacies. But seeing as guns are still legal in many parts of Europe, what is it that Europeans find weird about the gun-loving, rifle-wielding, Second Amendment-touting <laughs> American citizen? 
it might have something to do with America's gun-related death rate, seeing as per capita, there were 12 gun-related deaths for every 100,000 people in America in 2017. Dang. Very few European countries exceed three gun-related deaths per 100,000 people, and none even come close to America's 12 per 100,000. The causes of the problem are fiercely debated, but it might have something to do with how easy it is to buy a gun. Background checks are usually carried out, but a research survey from Harvard in 2015 estimated that a third of American gun owners have purchased a firearm without a background check. In Europe, many countries like Austria and Germany require would-be gun owners to go through a rigorous seven-step procedure before owning a gun. High-caliber handguns are outright banned in the UK, yep. and many categories of semi-automatic weapons are illegal to own across Europe. And it's simply world. much harder to legally purchase a gun in Europe than it is in the US, which I'm sure is a trigger point for some. Haha, <laughs> I like what Have they did there. you noticed any all-American quirks of your own? Well, there you go. Um, <clears throat> some interesting stuff there. Um, you know, like I said, HOAs are terrible. I hate them. Uh, the whole tax thing here is a mess. Uh, it needs to be, like, u universalized or automatically added into the cost that say, oh, I'm going to go buy a PlayStation 5 for $300. Well, it won't be $300. It would be like, you know, $324 for the, uh, you know, the PlayStation 5, stuff like that. But uh, let me know if you guys want me to continue doing more some more uh, <clears throat> videos like this. I absolutely enjoyed this um, and made me kind of go, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they don't do that there. Oh, yeah, that's right. The bathrooms here, the public bathrooms here are like gaps like that big. I forgot about that. So, uh, yeah, with that being said, I want to thank you all for watching. Stay safe and don't forget to wash your hands. Bye.